Canada, we're uh, we're coming to you today to bring a uh, a movie on safety and just uh, some general upgrades that we've done to uh, 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 our own room here, or my own room downstairs here, where I've, I've needed to uh, have some friends come in and help me uh, with some plumbing and uh, putting in some sinks, and we're going to show all that as we go through the video. Um, I also wanted to say thanks to everybody who uh, gave shout outs and gave uh, you know gave get wells and uh, and so forth as we were uh, going through our own uh, holiday. Um, a much needed holiday. Uh, we had a couple weeks just to, uh, to clear our minds and, uh, and have a chance to refocus. We're not back 100%, but we're definitely back and, uh, and we hope to, uh, to bring some better movies um, more in the fall time uh, when our team's fully back together and the kids are back at school, which gives us a lot more freedom. So uh, anyway, we'll get on with the show. This show is about safety and about upgrades. And, uh, and of course, this can open up to a lot of dialogue for different opportunities. Some of the things we're looking at for the fall time, um, just to plan some uh, food for thought, is we're going to be looking at MSN to transfer files because there's been a lot of people who have asked me, well, how can I get footage over to you to get it aired? Well, if you, if you send it through MSN and, uh, and send it to me through a, a file transfer protocol, which is basically MSN will allow that, you can send me footage and, uh, and, and we could possibly air that for you as well. So um, it, it, these are some things that we're looking at. It's how to work with different growers, and it's not uh, not air it so that you know we certainly wouldn't be claiming uh, claiming any um, uh, any airtime to it or nothing. But uh, anyway, enough said about that. That's just some thoughts that we have for the fall, and uh, there's definitely going to be some new things coming in the fall. So we'll get on with the movie again. It's it's about. Uh, really wiring your safety, looking at what the city is specifically looking for, which is going to be that 8 gauge wire that I show, and uh, making sure that it's, it's understood uh, clearly about uh, your wiring, and, uh, and of course having something like a fire extinguisher, just a handheld cheap one, you can pick them up for 30 bucks. Um, this could be the difference between burning your house down and not, and I speak to them that quite literally. Um, you can save your life with one of these. and. Uh, any smart grower will have one on standby just like any smart camper would take his first aid kit with him into the bush. So um, I suggest to anybody that is actually going to be growing to keep it, whether you think you have all the best equipment in the world, keep a fire extinguisher handy because you're still drawing a hell of a lot of power and equipment does fail. Um, all said, let's get into it. Welcome back. So we're downstairs and uh, we've had quite a few changes uh, since the last videos were, uh, were put up. Um, having the sinks put in. $200 upgrade, but uh, believe me, well worth the time when you don't have to carry these jugs up and down. Um, I, I fill them up and I let them sit out for 24 hours to let the water or the chlorine evaporate off the water, as well as to bring the water to room temperature. And, uh, and of course, uh, in the winter, I try to actually put them right in the room. Uh, in the summer, they can be out here. Um, and of course, uh, this was all $200 in, uh, in plumbing, basically in parts, about $150, I guess, in parts. And, uh, and then the sinks were just uh, in the back, so we had those reinstalled. But this, of course, is a grower's, uh, you know, this is what a grower needs, uh, without a doubt. You'll also notice we've uh, reinforced some of our security. About 16, this is one inch thick plywood, and then about 16 different screws to secure back this window. Uh, no different than this window over here, which is also going to be reinforced again. So when you're thinking about security, the one thing you want to do is make sure your basement is 110% secure. And uh, people are wondering about the hat. Uh, it was a gift from a friend. I said I'd wear it in a video. I mean, the shirt I'm wearing was a gift from Michelle. So, you know, I, I, I tend to do this stuff. Um, we wanted to bring the movie a couple of different fronts from security. Now, there's security from keeping um, people out who may want to come in and, and harm a medical user. But there's also security in making sure that you're keeping your house safe and your neighbors safe, um, which is fire security. So for instance, over here, um, we've got the entire room that we're, we're about to show we're running off this 40 amp breaker, okay? And this is all wired up to 
an eight gauge uh, cord. So this this cord, this cable alone, for instance, twenty feet, costing me sixty bucks. Okay, but this is what you need to be running if you're running forty amp circuit. Okay, and you're going to be pulling a forty amp breaker, and you're going to be pulling forty amps um, through there. Um, and what we're going to show you is a forty amp timer once we get inside the room. So this is fundamental because when the city inspectors come in, they're going to look at what are you pulling, you know, how much power are you pulling out of there, and does your wire support that power? Now, of course, we're going to class those, this wire up and stuff, but it's the last part of getting uh, those upgrades. But these are some additional things that we've done because now that we've got four lights running in there, of course, we're pulling a lot more power. Pulling that kind of power, everything needs to run together, and, uh, and of course, be CSA approved, like our timer box that we're going to show you. Um, so this is of course part of security. Another part you'll notice is there's motion sensors up here. This is a motion sensor that tags anybody coming in the back part of the basement. There's a huge back chamber which we'll show after. And we'll show some additional security features. Of course, uh, as you know, we can show all security features. We never can. Um, it, unfortunately, as legal exemptees, we have to do a lot of work. To, uh, to make ourselves safe. So we can't show you everything. A lot of guys don't even show their rooms. Um, I'm pretty much out there and transparent. Like I've often said, you know, we're ready for whoever has to happens to come through. Um, we have a right to defend our home. Uh, there's not much else we can do other than other than that because there's no real uh, there's no real protection as long as prohibition is out there. Um, you know, making inflation for uh, for cannabis and as long as there's a market for cannabis, supply and demand, <coughs> like any other drug, there's going to be a problem. So uh, anyway, um, let's take a look at the room because that's uh, that's going to be the next part. Yeah. Okay, so welcome back. We're inside the grow room in here, and uh, we've got all four lights lit up. Eventually, there's going to be six lights in here. Uh, we're currently got four going. As you see, I got room I can run another four. Um, this here's wired up for 120, but 240s going into it. You can see this is the big eight gauge cable I was talking about. This is a 40 amp timer. So with a 40 amp timer, you have to be running again. We had a 40 amp breaker, running 8 gauge wire, straight into a 40 amp timer. Which is says you have each pole being 120 to 480 volts. So uh, again, industrial timer. And then in here we have a set for, of course, our photo period 1212. And uh, you know this is this, this is the way to actually make sure that you're running uh, electrically sound. Now here I can go up to six lights with 40 amps. You basically take five amps for each 600 watt light. Then uh, you're looking generally at about six lights a year we get away with. We're running one 1,000, which is here. So it's standing in its own standalone circuit. I would run other sixes here. I could run three more sixes if I wanted to. Um, again, the choices. Uh, having a dimmer switch and everything else is, is mainly for the fans. I've killed the fans so you guys can kind of hear what I'm saying. Um, so this was a fundamental upgrade over the summer that we did, mainly for security, um, being fire security. I can't underestimate that if you're playing with a lot of electricity and you start pulling a lot of power, um, four 600 watt lights or, or three 600s and a thousand, pull a lot of electricity, you got to have the industrial electricity um, format. you got to have the equipment that works for that to make it work and, uh, and, and make sure that you understand it. Um, a, a lot of house fires start just for people underestimating the amount of electricity. So I'm not going to harp on that too much. One of the other major investments uh, that we made over the summer it was also down here, which is the AC unit. It's a fire of fire. It also has an ionizer built right into it. And right now there's also a remote control, so I can actually set it. Um, and I have a set it going right now on auto at 18 degrees Celsius. Um, which brings this room down to 25. It has it running in, in, in an optimal uh, time range, usually around 25, 26. Uh, sorry, 25.1. I'll ask my camera person to zoom in on here. So we've got a perfect climate running at 25.1, which is what I'm happy with. So that's fundamental as well. Um, the other thing is you have the ability to set the timer on here. And then what's good is that in the winter you just disconnect your ducking and you have yourself a dehumidifier and you also have yourself a heater. It has a 1300 watt heater in here as well. So uh, of course when you're dealing with uh, cold issues in the winter, you can keep your room constantly climate controlled. One of these 501 units will run you about 700 bucks. Um,